I haven't even seen this. We're seeing this for the first time together. That's what a beaver lodge looks like. There's Mr. Beaver swimming out there in the pond. He's not happy with me. So a buddy of mine called me it's about nine o'clock at night he's got a cow that's been having problems been up and down for about three or four hours afraid she might be having trouble calving so we're gonna go over here and go check her out see if we can't uh, help her out if she needs it Well, I'm back home. She didn't need any help. All right, so it's next morning. Today's Thursday, it's Valentine's Day. I just got Knox dropped off at the preschool and I got a variety of things that I have to do today. Um, I got a couple problems. I got one pasture that has beavers. If you've seen it on my Facebook page, they've dammed the creek up. Uh, it wasn't that bad, but now I've got electric fence that is sitting and standing water uh, and it's really becoming a problem so I've got to try to bust a hole in that dam to get the water level back down and try to figure out what I'm gonna do about those beavers I also have a friend's pasture uh, who has some coyote problems and we need to go set some traps and see if we can't trap and relocate these coyotes to get them away from his cows and on top of that the bees need uh, their second oxalic acid treatment. I try to do a couple times a year uh, one treatment seven days apart. I treated them last Thursday so they're ready for their second treatment so I've got to do that. So we'll take you along with me. Alright, so I got the uh, coyote trap set. I'm not really a trapping channel, so I'm not going to post a whole lot of stuff like that on there, on this channel for obvious reasons. Uh, if you're interested in trapping and things like that, then I would recommend you checking out a channel like uh, Coyote Trapping School. I've learned a lot from them. And uh, I'll show you some of my traps and the things I use, but most of the stuff that I learned about trapping I learned from uh, from the guy on uh, 
I can't remember his name now, but on uh, Coyote Trap and School, he's really good. And uh, Robbie Gilbert has a Trapping Time TV. I learned a lot of stuff from him too. But uh, now we're going to go down here and look at. We'll look at some traps first, and then I want to go down here and show you the damage that the beavers are doing to my pasture, and uh, kind of show you why we've got to do something. Uh, bust a hole in the dam for one to get the water level back down. And we got to figure out something to do about these beavers. All right, chickens are following me around. They follow me around like dogs. They free range and I feed them. So they, when they see me out here, they go crazy. But here's some of the traps I've got hanging up that I use. These are some dog proof traps, some Duke uh, DPs. Those are good if you've got uh, like possums or skunks or raccoons anything like that getting in your chickens causing you any problems those work great uh, these are all mb 550s i love the mb 550 it's a minnesota brand five and a half inch foot hold trap it's got a recess in it uh, for humane catches that's required in the state of north carolina and uh, i bought most of my mb 550s in a kit it's a predator control starting kit and uh, I'll try to put a link in the description below on the website where you can get those and these traps here these are uh, Duke traps they're Conabare 330s um, it's pretty much the best trap you can use for catching beavers so that's what we're gonna go try out today this is all underwater here uh, thanks to the beavers this used to be dried out it was a swamp at one point and I got rid of the beavers and when I got rid of them I got the creek back in its original channel and all this dried up this is where my horses come get water you can see where they've been walking through here uh, when I have cattle in this pasture they lay down here under these trees and this is where they get water a lot too uh, this creek right here is really backed up. I hope the wind doesn't mess with this video too much, but I've got a low wire over, you know, across the creek there for calves and stuff to keep them from going under the fence. And you can see it's uh, got a lot of debris and stuff hanging on it. This creek is really backed up. It should not be this big. It should be much, much smaller and only about ankle deep. So as we get over here, you'll really see a lot more damage. See, this creek water here is not even flowing anymore. This, this creek is supposed to be flowing. That little log over there is supposed to be out of water. There should be no water back there really backed up it's backed up all back in there and then right here now this is new I haven't even seen this we're seeing this for the first time together you see that dam right there so see this this fence that runs right up through there and all these posts back through here and around through here there's about 23 posts I set every one of those posts with a shovel I dug those holes uh, by hand, um, two to three foot deep and carried 80 pound bags of concrete. And all of this should be dry. I should be able to mow it with a tractor. But look, my fence is underwater. I have water running out around the fence into my pasture. The beavers are just very, very destructive. If you look down here at my feet, I'm over ankle deep in water, but you know, people want to know why. They say, why you want to mess with the beavers? Well, this is why. Um, they're just destructive by nature. It's all they know. So we're going to have to do something about this. So now we got two dams to bust. You have to forgive the wind noise if there is any, but here is the... Uh, the main dam right here their lodge is down that way down below the dam I'll try to get 
quick video of that. But this is the, the main dam that has everything backed up all the way back in there and right back in there, the edge of that pasture is where we were just at. So I need to set, set a trap down here. I need to try to bust a hole in that dam to uh, get that water, get that water to flow and, and get it the uh, water level down. So it'll drain my pastures out. All right, so right over there is the lodge. The beavers are swimming out of that lodge right there. They're swimming right through this channel here. Then they're coming around right through here. And they're going right up to that dam. All right, here it is. This is where I want to bust it they're run to it and it goes right down through there there's mr beaver swimming out there in the pond he's not happy with me Last time I was down here, they'd take their tails and smack them on the water. Got these little damn buses. So we've drained a lot of it. It's definitely not the pond that it once was. Let's go look at the other end. See how that little dam up there is doing. All right. It looks like our work has paid off. No more water running around the fence. Still a lot of moisture, but that'll just have to drain and dry out. Here's our dam that we busted. We got a lot of rain coming in the next couple days, so I'm hoping with all that rain, we uh, the creeks will get up a little bit and it'll help wash some of this stuff out. But you can see the creek is now back in its channel the way it should be. Walk back up to here. Show you what these creeks are supposed to look like. This is what it's supposed to look like. Not deep creeks, shallow. This is what it's supposed to look like. Very different. Just took us a couple hours worth of work to get it there. And hopefully we can figure out a solution to our beaver problem. See, even up here, that fence wire was really close to the water and it's not supposed to be. Here's another problem on the farm that the beavers cause. I got a lot of dead trees. Back in 2016, I, uh, I got rid of my beavers for the first time. And you can probably see a lot of these trees are dead and it's because they had a huge dam right here, right past that double H brace. And they had all this up through here flooded and they chewed all the bark off around these trees the uh landowners before us if you see that tree right there around the bottom they tried to put wire like chicken wire to keep them from chewing 
and uh, right there's a tree that's been chewed up. It's still alive. They didn't kill it. But they killed a lot of these other trees, and what happens when they do that, the trees die, and then the tops of the trees and these huge limbs fall, they land on my fence. And so, after every rainstorm, or heavy windstorm, I have to come down here and get big chunks of limbs and see it broke a maple off when it fell and land on the fence so I have to constantly fix this then these big chunks of wood that you see laying around get in the creek and they wash down through the creek and they hit my electric fence wire and tear my fence post up just secondary beaver problems all right thanks for coming along with me today uh, working on a beaver problem here at the farm Maybe you learned something today, whether it was about uh, how, you, how you trap beavers or, you know, their lodge or the dam or maybe just how destructive they are. Uh, you know, a lot of times people give farmers and landowners a bad rap because uh, we don't leave the beavers alone. But I hope maybe you can see with the way my creeks are and how they're flooding my pastures, cutting the trees, damming up the creeks, uh, see that it's not always... Uh, the farmers or landowners being being mean or cruel to the beavers it's just a simple fact that they're very destructive by nature and if you don't control them then they will destroy your land and so you have to uh, sometimes you have to step in and bust their dams and set traps and try to run them off well it's been a cloudy day today and it's supposed to get up around 60, and I was going to uh, try to hit my hives with some oxalic acid again, but that's not going to happen. It's supposed to get up around 60. It actually didn't get up to probably in the low 50s, and it's been cloudy, a little bit breezy. You can probably hear that on the camera, and uh, so we're going to have to put the oxalic acid off till another day because I don't really feel like pestering my bees when it's really just warm enough for them to fly. I don't want to hit them with ox oxalic acid. And it is uh, Valentine's Day, so I mean, I hit them last week on February 7th with uh, oxalic acid. Mites really shouldn't be that bad this time of year. So if you uh, like our videos, want to follow us along on our farming adventures, uh, please feel free to like the video and subscribe. And uh, hopefully it'll be getting warm here before long and we'll get to have some cabin videos and hopefully some more beekeeping videos. All right, you have a good one.